Mm -hmm. Hey, Jim. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey, I see that you're uh, getting ready for the show. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I know. Me too. It, it should be just a few more minutes. Okay. And uh, then we'll get started. Okay. All right. Cool. Anything you need? I'm trying to warm up my voice. Oh, okay. So uh, I was thinking, you know, maybe you can teach me some of your voicing skills. Okay. All right. How about, how about we do some character voices? Yes. Okay. I would uh, love that. So let's, uh, let's start off with our Mickey Mouse. How about that? Okay. All right. So uh, just repeat after me. Ha ha. Ha ha. Hey, that was good. Mm. That was great. Okay. Ha ha. Oh boy. Ha ha. Oh boy. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. I love it. Okay, that was good. Yes. All right, so let's move on to a little Scooby. Maybe a little Scooby. Okay, game. like the lower register. Yeah, little, that would help yes, warm yes, it up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I almost wanted to go yoda on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a little Scooby would be. Uh, row, row, Hey, ah. wow. Okay, you're going to give me a run for my money here. Okay, uh, let's see. One more. Oh, what about Yogi Bear? Yogi okay. Bear. Hey, boo-boo. Hey, boo-boo. Hey, boo-boo. Hey, boo-boo. All right, all right. And What's one last one. Picking a bus. Oh, okay, all right. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it, yeah. <laughs> and uh, one last one. We'll do uh, uh, Water Boy. Okay. All right. <clears throat> my, my mama's tip. My, my mama? My mama. My mama. My mama. My mama said. My mama said. My mama said it's time for light talk. It's time to have some fun. Oh, light talk with Sammy Mud. We got skits and interviews. We got everything but the blues. It's sound. Talk is on. Light Talk with Sam Beeman. Good evening and welcome to Light Talk. Man, that, that sounded so crazy. But hey, we're going to go with it. All right, uh, I'm your host, as always, Sam Beeman, and we've got a great show lined up for you, as we always have a great show lined up for you. Now, today we're going to be dealing with, uh, we're going to be talking about talent, okay? So, and I can't help but think of some of some of my own experiences of the past of of getting to a place where I was I was in a competition or maybe I I got somewhere and uh, and something happened like for instance one time I was competing in a competition down in Orlando Florida and there was this one girl who she was competing in this Broadway musical category and she had an amazing voice and I'm when I say amazing I mean amazing voice and she had everything she was commanding the stage and there were six judges keep in mind there were six judges about 10 feet from the stage this stage had those little lights all along the front of it you know and they had an audience it might have been like 100 or 200 people or so all right so we're watching and we're on the edge of our seat and we noticed that she kept getting closer and closer and closer to the edge of the stage and we were like this is amazing. Like she's able to get that close to the stage and not, and then she fell. <laughs> she actually fell right off the stage. And you know what happened? Everybody went, oh, but she got up, put her hand on the desk of those judges and she kept singing. That's right. The show must go on. Afterwards, I had a chance to talk with her and she said that she was, she felt so bad because of what happened. But I said, no, actually what you did was amazing because you showed everyone in the room that you could continue to keep going with your talent. And that's what people will remember more than just the song. They'll remember how you handled the falling off of the stage. And for the rest of the week, all that people could talk about was that moment because not because it was an embarrassment by any means, but that she kept going, she persevered, and that's what we have to do. So, with that in mind, today's guest is Jen Mosley, and we're going to check in with Jean Wenger, my agent. So stick around, we'll be back in just a moment. Caller tune while waiting for the person you are calling to answer. <laughs> Thank you for calling. Please 
Hey, Hope. Hey, this is Sam. I... Hope! Hey, how are you? Ah. Hey, Hope. I just wanted to talk to you about a sca... Ah. Hey, Hope. This is Sam. You probably know that. Hope. Hey, how are you? This is Sam. I just want to talk to you about something that I talked to you about that we talked about. Hey, Hope. This is Sam. I was just going to talk to you about the sca... Ah. Hope. Hello there. This is Sam. Hope, guess what? We got Hugh Jackman coming on the show. <laughs> That's right. Hugh Jackman's going to be on the show. And he's going to be in the, the skit, the photo shoot skit. <sighs> this is crazy. Think, think, think. What do I want to say? Your message has been sent. Thank you for calling. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm looking. Oh, no. What did I do? Huh? <laughs> Oh, girl, just what do you know? Got a missed call. Oh, wait. Hugh Jackman? He's going to be coming here for a photo shoot. Oh my gosh, Hugh Jackman, we're, we're, we're talking Wolverine and the, the Greatest Showman and, 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 and P.T. Barnum, P. Hugh Jackman, he is so awesome, I cannot believe, oh my gosh, I gotta change my hair, I gotta change my clothes, I gotta get ready for this, Sam, I cannot believe you did this, this is so great! Yeah, about that. Uh-huh. See, after I got off the phone, his people called back and, well, because of social distancing and a travel ban, I, he sends his thoughts, his love, his boomerangs, but not himself. I'm so sorry. So what you're telling me is you told me he was coming and now he's not coming. I know that you wanted him to be in this photo shoot skit, but you understand, don't you? I, I'm sorry. I wish there was something I could do. It's okay. Um, you know what, actually? There is something you can do. All right, come on, Hugh. Give me what you got. Ooh, nice. Claws out. Has anybody ever told you that you look like Sam Beeman? Uh, are we good? <laughs> Let me see. Nope, we're good. And we're back with my guest, Jen Mosley. Hello. Now, I wanted to make sure that, uh, that I said the right thing. So, Jen, not Jennifer. Yeah. Um, now, is that, one of those, <laughs> is that one of those things that happens? Because like, uh, I know for me, I was Sammy. And then like, I got to a point where well, I was like, Well, I grew oh, up as Sammy. Jenny or Jen, and my soccer coach would call me Hennifer. Really? <laughs> <laughs> he was foreign. <laughs> uh, Hennifer. 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 Uh, can you relate to to my opening story as, uh, as an artist? <laughs> um, definitely, I've 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 had some awkward moments uh, singing on stage at at uh, at church, and uh, uh, over, I made the mistake over at Rivertown Church. Rivertown Church, yes. yeah. Uh, I made the mistake of drinking an A and W root beer <laughs> right before I was supposed to go oh, on. Oh no! And. Uh, and we were supposed to sing, I think it was like Reckless Love or oh, something. Oh and I had some major hiccups. <laughs> Literally. Oh, major, yeah. Oh, <laughs> the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. I was like, this is the Holy Spirit, y'all. <laughs> This is holy laughter. Right this now. is, yeah. So I, I could uh, definitely, definitely relate to wow. uh, some moments like that. <laughs> That's just one. It's now, okay. now, of course, being on stage too, did, did you look out and notice anybody like, did they, did they have a look on their face or were they totally with you like, oh yeah, <laughs> like were they trying to emulate what you were doing? <laughs> I, I really, I asked a few people that were there and I was like, did you hear me hiccup? And they were like, no, I was like, what, during what song? And, and I was like, it was like the most emotional, <laughs> spiritual song we were singing at the moment. And, and 
I don't think they noticed, but I told them, I was like, yeah, that was, I had some hiccups. That, that's so <laughs> funny. Uh, I'm always afraid, and just as, a, as an entertainer, you know, as a uh, comedian, and, and you, know, you know, I sing as well mm-hmm. in shows, but I, I try to be mindful, like, before I go on stage, especially even in acting, like doing shows at the uh, Springer Opera House. I would try not to eat or drink anything yeah. before I, I went le- out, I did I learn so my lesson. I, no more A&W, <laughs> no sodas right before service. Nope, nope. Well, you're the worship leader over at Rivertown Church. Yes. And you're also a singer-songwriter. And how long have you been doing, doing this? I mean, well, writing songs and singing. I think about maybe 15 years yeah. of, okay. of like writing. I mean, I say I, I started writing songs 15 years ago, but they were like, you know, really simple and, mm-hmm. you know, some of them were silly. I remember the very first, not the very first, but one of the very first songs that I remember, like actually sitting on my bed and playing through, is because I had a um, little wallpaper of the beach around my room. Yeah. And so I wrote, a, wrote my first song about <laughs> sandcastles. And okay. Yeah, so so that was, <laughs> I'm sure that's going to be a great song one day. <laughs> yes, that's right, that's right. But, well, I can definitely relate. So how old were you around that time uh, like, I'd, writing the Sandcastle song? I started around 19. 19, okay. Mm-hmm. I, I was uh, definitely afraid of, of singing in front of anybody really? before that. So. so how did you overcome that? Because there's probably somebody watching right now mm-hmm. that is is just as afraid as you used to be. Like, mm-hmm. how did you overcome that hurdle? I think the biggest thing that helped me overcome was the encouragement of other people. Um, you know, like I, just growing up, I didn't have a lot of self-confidence and uh, I always, you know, had that self-doubt and I would sing in my room all the time and my parents knew that I sang and my brothers knew that I sang, but nobody else, not even my best friends, knew that I sang. Um, And so it surprised everybody when I finally, you know, gained the courage to, I started playing guitar because my brothers were playing instruments then. And so I got got interested in that and, started singing in my room and then somebody whispered into somebody else's ear and told somebody about hey why don't you ask Jennifer to sing and uh, on the worship team at my home church um, back in Douglasville and uh, he came up to me that Sunday morning and, and asked me like he well he didn't really ask me he told me he said <laughs> you're gonna be singing. you yeah join the join the worship team <laughs> you and um and so that was it was because before i would never just say hey i want to join the worship team i'd never like put myself out there mm-hmm. and um and so that was just to kind of getting my feet wet um at first a lot with, of times with we the need worship team that encouragement we need that motivation yes uh, we definitely. need that extra push Oh yeah, to, and it was—it it felt like a push, like, uh, okay, yes <laughs> <Or> sir, <laughs> yes sir, I'll show up for rehearsal, yes sir, <laughs> and uh, and so I did, and and uh, and I've been, you know, playing and leading worship, playing, kinda. singing, leading, and writing. Mm. writing the writing kind of came later, okay. uh, as far as you know, once I started realizing, like, maybe I can do something with this, like. Because the, the songs just kept going, coming, and I have this big notebook full of, like, tons of songs and songs and songs. And, um, you know, I, I, I kept telling myself, like, I think there's something here, mm-hmm. and I know God wouldn't want me to just leave it in the notebook and, you know, keep it for myself. And so I actually started getting a little braver and uh and just uh sharing some of them with with some of my friends and family and and getting really good feedback and so um and where we're at now mm -hmm. with what's happened so you've gotten this good feedback and and you've just had a song featured on joy fm yeah so it's it's exciting it's exciting. Did to, someone encourage you to do to, that? Like, <laughs> hey, you need to go ahead and... That, that would be my mom. Okay. My mom is definitely uh, 
my biggest fan and, and super encouraging since day one. And, um, you know, she, she called me up. She said, hey, they're, they're doing this local artist spotlight on the Joy FM. You should submit some of your songs. And I was like, I don't know. I'm not sure about that. And she was like, well, it doesn't hurt to try. <laughs> That's right. And I mean, it really doesn't. And so um, I submitted it. And like, I think the next day, uh, the, the guy called me, Benji, at yeah. the Joy, and, know, Benji. and said, hey, we'd like to feature you um, as one of our spotlight artists. So I was, I was like shocked and excited at the same time and nervous at the same time you know so i i can only imagine wait <laughs> did i just use a song title i'm so sorry no but um uh i think that we need to to let everybody hear this song so do you mind if we uh, we show that clip from top cat mm -hmm. studios oh yeah that'd be okay, great yeah, let's let's definitely show them that and uh tell everybody how they can get a hold of you if anyone wants to uh can they go to your website or yes uh, i just just created a website because they were like, hey, do you have a website? I said, well, all I had was a Facebook thing. And so uh, I created one. Uh, it's jenmosleymusic.com, and it's J-E-N-M-O-Z-L-E-Y.com. Um, and you can go there, and you can listen to some of the albums that I've already released. And also there's a section where it says contact me. And so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to email that address. So yeah, That sounds good. Well, thank you, Jen, for being on the show, and uh, we're going to show them this song, All right. and uh, we'll be back in just a moment. Uh, this is a song that I co-wrote with Brian Height, and uh, it was produced, uh, the track was produced by uh, Justin Ballou at his studio, Bib City Sound, and so this is the unplugged version of Reveal Me. My vision has been blurred From the shadows of my past I have covered with this mask But you see underneath A little child you
So, so I love, I love Christmas. But you know, my mom, she loves Christmas as well. She loves having myself and my two brothers to to come and have Christmas at her house and to read us the Christmas story and the story of Jesus. Usually they don't get to the story of Jesus because they're usually out asleep by the time that she gets through with the first book. But then the next morning, she wants us to do that thing, and maybe you guys have done this before, where you, you, you put your hand on the shoulder of the person in front of you, and they walk you into the, does anybody ever do that? Like, walk you into the room, all the kids? Okay, it's just my mom. Okay, great. That's great. Okay, this is just, this is just a demon thing. Okay. So she would, she would make us line up like a little train, and we would go into the living room, and, and she would not want us to open our eyes, and she would have the camera going, and then record our reactions when we got to see all of the presents. And I think that's totally understandable for a bunch of 30-year-old guys. I do. <laughs> I mean, it teaches you discipline. <laughs> Immaturity. Huh? That was a lot of fun with Jim. And now I want to check in with my agent, uh, Jean Selig Wanger. Did I say it right? I was, I was trying. That was close enough. Yeah, close enough? Oh, man. <laughs> With Treasure Coast talent all the way out in LA. Hey, hey. Sam. Hey. <laughs> uh, so, so guess what? On today's episode, I'm talking about, I'm talking about talent um, because at the beginning of the episode, I basically share shared a story about a competition that I had uh, competed in in Orlando, Florida, and uh, it was for AMTC. And there was, uh, there was a person who basically fell off the stage while she was singing. Oh, wow. Yeah. And she kept going. Oh, that's awesome. That's yes. a pro. That's a pro there. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And so I was sharing that uh, earlier, how she kept going. And she didn't stop. And I talked to her afterwards and she was, she said that she was embarrassed. I said, no, that was amazing. What you did was amazing. You showed everybody that the show must go on. I mean, she didn't even skip a beat. It was one of the most beautiful, incredible things I'd ever seen. Wow. Where she fell off the stage and the judges were right. I mean, they were like about 10 feet from the <laughs> stage. And I, when I say she fell off the stage and you couldn't see her, then she came back up and went on the next beat and just, sold that next note. That's amazing. I hope she got a standing ovation. She did. <laughs> oh, good. She, absolutely did. <laughs> she earned it for sure. Yes, she did. Uh, well, I wanted to check in with you because I know it's been a little while since we've uh, seen, seen each other. Um, That's true. Where, where was it the last time we saw each other? Was it? I want to say maybe the National Christmas Orlando. Film Festival or the one in Nashville? I think it was the, the one a year ago in Orlando. Wow. I think that's where it was. Um, yeah, and that, that was such a. It was, it was right before I moved, and I knew at that yeah. time that I was going to be moving, but I couldn't say say anything yet. So it was very strange, knowing everything that was going on in my personal life with with you know getting ready to put the house on the market, and I had been flying back and forth to California to look at houses, but it was like still top secret. Um, it was a whirlwind weekend for sure. <laughs> it was soon after that. I think it was, it became official and, um, we knew for sure we were heading to the West coast. Had, how has it been since the transition? I know you, you've been going, you know, from, from coast to coast. Right? I was doing back and forth. Yeah. Trips back and forth, um, from the East to the West coast, um, up until COVID-19. Um, and then obviously that kind of shut down travel. Um, but yeah, it was, you know, my, there was my, my career, you know, transition, but then there was also just transitioning my whole family here um, with my husband starting a new job, the kids getting settled in school. So it was kind of like a dual trans transition. There was a lot going on there. So it's, I can't believe it's been 11 months. I mean, we moved here July 4th weekend, um, right in time for the, the first two earthquakes of July the day that the moving truck came and then the day after, and we start going, what in the world do we do? <laughs> but, um, but it's actually been, you know, a really great transition. I'm very thankful. It's, um, I love it here. I love our area. I love the schools that our kids were in. I love our church. 
Um, things are getting, you know, I'm starting to really build um, relationships out here in the industry, which has been a blessing. Obviously, everything just kind of shut down with COVID-19. So that's been just different. Yeah. Um, but it's been and, great. And there's a lot that's been happening with TCT as well, Treasure Coast Talent. Yeah, I'm now licensed in California. Okay. And um, I had thought about continuing with my Florida license, but I decided it would just make more sense for me to put all my time and energy um, into the, the California agency. So I decided not to renew my license, which was kind of hard. I, I was surprised by how emotional I felt about it, but that's where I kind of got my start in the industry. And, um, but I decided not to renew it. And so now I'm licensed out here and just working on kind of, you know, the next steps um, that I need to do out here. Well, I wanted to uh, to check in with you uh, to basically for the viewers that are watching right now to kind of help understand what what it means to have an agent um, and should you just submit to any agency? Um, that's a good question. You know, because and and that's that's something that I feel like, yeah. and I've been down that road. You know, where I've wanted to quickly submit, you know, my headshots my resume, my reel, and to anybody and everybody, and like, who, who's gonna take me? You know, like, who, who would take me? Who would take me? You know, um, and, and then I just kinda, I, I put that on the shelf for a long time, and so it's been, I mean, for me, it's been, you know, 20 years. I mean, I've been working a lot in theater, and then I, you know, made my way up to commercial and TV and film, but for those that are watching that, that wanna know, like, how how to go about getting an agent what should they do what what is the best thing yes. for them okay great questions i would just say um just because you want to be an actor doesn't mean you should just jump right in and get an agent you need to make sure that you understand the industry not only um be well skilled and experienced as an actor but also understand the business side of it and um because you can't expect your agent to handle everything. Um, agents partner with talents, but the talents need to really be well-versed and understand the industry already themselves and continue to be working on their own behalf and not just kind of saying, well, I got an agent. Now I can sit back. The agent's going to do all the work and I'm just going to reap all the benefits of it. Um, it's definitely a partnership relationship. Yeah. Um, also, I think it's very important to understand that there's different types of agents that focus on different areas. And what I've done over the few years since I've been in the industry is I've definitely evolved myself, um, starting out as a manager, then becoming an agent in Florida, which was mainly a commercial um, area, but also realizing that my where I was drawn and I felt called was more into the faith-based film world, um, inspirational, family-friendly film world. And, and that has become kind of my niche. And so every agent has their own niche. So make sure when you're submitting, you're not just doing blanket submissions to every agent in your region, because first of all, they'll be able to easily tell if you just submitted, you know, um, to everybody, mm -hmm. or if they really research you and you'll be able to see it by what they put in their cover letter to you or in their original email. Um, you'll know if they really know anything about you or if you're just one of many submissions and they're not they're not doing their research um, and that tells you a lot about you know the the talent themselves um, so i would say make sure you find an agent and only submit to those who work on the the specific um things that you want to work on so if you want to be a commercial actor look for somebody in your region that's very strong in commercial work or if you want to do voiceovers or if you want to do tv and film make sure you find a, an agent that works in the area that you feel um, best suited for. Um, now that I'm out here in LA, I'm going to continue to work on faith-based films nationwide, but I'm also going to be focusing on TV and films, um, general theatrical stuff out here in the LA market. Um, so it'll be the network TV shows and the feature films and things like that. And those are my areas and that's it. I, I've decided I need to really focus on those two things, not spread myself too thin. And there's enough other agents out there that, that focus on other things that I don't need to be all things for all people. And um, so, and I think there's more and more agents that are starting to do that for sure. 
Well, and I'd also like to add that with that in mind, to, uh, to definitely be prepared too when you do meet with uh, an agent, like you said, to know something about the industry. When you mentioned, you know, finding an agent for something specific. Right. I, I had approached an agent years ago that, at a voiceover conference. And I just went up and said, here's my, here's my demo. And the good thing about him was he, he basically said, put that away. If it's not, if, if you have not had a professional demo, then hold on to that. Because the, the first thing or the, the worst thing you could do is to make a bad first impression. Oh yeah. And sure. that was some of the best advice that I could have ever been given because it it helped me it was hard at the time yeah but i had to go back home and and hit square one and yeah go, regroup hey. yeah, yeah regroup and go back in even when um even when you know we talked you know like i said it had been many years since i'd even considered talking to to an agent uh that was in film tv um just because i i, I didn't know if if i even really had what it took at that point uh, because I had been down some roads where I I just wasn't sure. Uh, but at the same time, because I knew so much about the industry that uh, I felt like I was better prepared. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's good. I mean, you learn, and that's the thing is when, when you get advice like that from people in the industry, how you respond to that advice really makes a difference so you took that and you said you know what that is a good point i'm going to learn from it rather than um getting offended by it and it's very mm -hmm. important when you do get advice from people in the industry um take it you know from the perspective they're trying to be helpful um they're not trying to be mean and if you can learn from the advice of people in the industry um i think that's that's very beneficial um yeah, for sure. So I think that was the right, right choice. Well, and you've even given me some, uh, some great advice with, uh, with what you were saying earlier, you know, continue to do things, even when you're not, even when you're not auditioning, um, you know, continue to work on your, on your reel or, um, you know, update your website. I mean, just, you know, take care of your Facebook page, whatever you're doing, but, but even, you know, producing some things, if you, you if you have writing chops or, or producing chops, you your know, own content. Put your yeah. own content. And that's when uh, I put out the cheapskate zone. Yeah. And, that's so uh, important. And, and along with that too, just networking. And networking isn't just about promoting what you're doing. It's about supporting what other people are doing. Yes. And sometimes actors tend to be very self-focused and they're like, well, I need to put out stuff for people to look at me. And you need to always remember, um, if you're expecting people to support you, you need to be doing the same back. It's a, it's a mutually beneficial um, a situation. And so it's so important to, to continue networking, not always with what you can get from people, but what you can offer to others. And if everybody is in, in the industry doing that same thing, it's gonna benefit everybody and we're all gonna grow and learn together. So, yep. That sounds good to me. Uh, that's some great advice there, Jean. Well, I think that uh, we're probably going to have to go ahead and take a break uh, here. But uh, is there anything else that you'd like to say right before we go to the break? Uh, can they go check out the website or? Yeah, right now we have to update the website. We have a lot of new profiles that we need to add. But you can okay. check us out on Facebook okay. and Treasure Goes Town on Facebook, Instagram. And then we're also on IMDb. And right. look forward to some exciting things to come because we, we have a lot of fun things going on behind the scenes. Hey, that sounds great. Awesome. Well, thank, you. thank you, Jean. Great to and, see you, uh, Sam. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> all right, we'll be back in just a moment. Well, first of all, I got these threads from the thrift store. Everyone can relax. The old joker is here. I got a new haircut. Oh, why are you calling me little buddy? I mean, you've been doing this for over 20 years. Oh, and I love my ring. I just wish I could pick it over and never. Uh, <laughs> Cleanliness is next to godliness. That's one of my favorite verses. I've been trained by one of the I've been trained by one of the best choreographers in the galaxy. He is horrible. 
Yeah. You are horrible. Well, his music is horrible. What is up with the music? Who hired this guy? Yeah, I definitely could have suggested a better DJ. One that's more smooth. Well, it looks like it's time to go ahead and shut this episode down. It's been a lot of fun, though. Now, as, as I think about talent and, and starting out as a young man for myself as an actor, I really didn't know that I was an actor until my early 20s. And then I thought I wanted to pursue acting wholeheartedly. In fact, I, I poured myself into it to the point where I felt like I was going to Hollywood and that's where I would be. And so I would be in every show that I could be in, from the Springer Opera House to the Human Experience Theater, and I really enjoyed it. It was theater all year long, and I loved to act. That's what I found out about myself, was that I loved to act. And in fact, when I first began, I did it for free. That's right, I didn't get paid anything. So I was in shock when I got my first paycheck for acting. I couldn't believe it. But see, the thing is, I had all of those years that I had poured into learning how to be a better actor. And I didn't get offended when someone told me that I didn't do a good job. Because like my agent said, I took that advice and I learned how I could be better as a performer, as an actor. Now it's 20 years later, actually probably 23 years later, and I'm still acting not on a regular basis, but God has opened many doors for me to be able to do different projects, some that just come out of nowhere, but I'm continuing to work on my craft as much as I can. And maybe that's you out there. Maybe there's something that you really would love to do for a living. Maybe it's your passion. I just encourage you, continue to work at your craft. Don't give up. And like the young lady I talked about earlier in the program, persevere. The show must go on. I hope that you've had a great time on this episode of Light Talk. And uh, be sure to check out my guests, Jen Mosley and Jean Salig Wagner. I'm Sam Beeman, and you're watching Light Talk. Take care, and God bless.